Hello, my name is John Ralph. Many of you may know me for being the lucky man who swept Pocahontas off of her feet. Quite literally, as she was kidnapped as collateral to trade for the lost Englishmen and weapons that were previously captured by the Indians. The only real thing that was kidnapped during this time was her capturing my heart. As romantic as that story is, I am not here to talk to you about this fairy tale, which ultimately was the first step to bringing back peace between the Indians and colonists. But that's besides the point. For I am here to talk about what brought me to the New World when I arrived to Virginia in the year 1610. I was sponsored by the Virginia Company to set forth to establish a permanent English settlement in the Americas. We were in competition with the Spanish, who had established colonies in both Central and South America. They had stolen vast amounts of treasure and wealth from the native inhabitants. So. In turn, we Englishmen were eager to find similar wealth in the northern part of the Americas. In the long run, we also wanted to establish permanent towns in the New World to stake a claim for the British government. Many of these settlers were strictly adventurers. They were driven solely by the idea to become wealthy beyond their wildest dreams. I was hesitant going in because of our lack of available food, but I realized how great this opportunity could be for myself and everyone that made this journey with me. We, had, we heard stories of some of the horrors that lurked around the corner for us, such as disease, famine, and tough living conditions, but this did not put off the people with riches on their mind. <clears throat> About half of the men of the Virginia Company were wealthy gentlemen and their personal servants. Neither the gentlemen nor their servants really did not know much about agriculture or farming. There were not nearly enough workers to plant and grow the food that we needed. The lack of clean water, the fact that Jamestown was built on a swamp, the lack of food, and just the general men's disinterest in agriculture all contributed to a high death rate. I, I had been worried from the beginning that people would be more focused on extract, extracting the treasures of the land rather than surviving, and I was slowly starting, starting to realize that I might have been correct in my assumptions. I believe since the Spanish had been successful in making use of their wealth of the New World, we just assumed that it would be easy for wealth to be found in Virginia. But we soon realized this was not the case. When I first arrived, I came across a colony in Jamestown that was struggling to return profits to the Virginia Company. For they tried silk making, glass making, lumber, sassafras, pitch and tar, and even soap ashes, and none of those found financial success. I decided to experiment with tobacco, which, until that point, had been controlled on European markets by the Spanish. The native tobacco that we tried to sell before was unsuccessful. Virginia tobacco had a stronger odor and flavor than tobacco grown in the West Indies, and the English consumers preferred the milder variety. I used tobacco seeds I obtained from the Caribbean, 
when my ship I voyaged in, the Sea Venture, crashed from a hurricane upon its shores. I knew from the beginning that the market had a large consumer base, and I just knew I needed to perfect that crop. I actually remember my exact words the day I decided this. Likewise tobacco, which there thriveth so well that no doubt but after a little more trial and experience in the curing, therefore, of it, will compare with the best in the West Indies. So, I'm a man of my word, and I took on this challenge. I made trial of the tobacco crop and found that it was well suited to the growing conditions of the new colony. This strain was more fragrant and more sweet than the native tobacco. I, just, I tested against my own taste and gave some to friends. One agreed and replied that the new leaf smoked pleasant, sweet, and strong. From there, we raised enough to ship four ballo barrels of tobacco to England. It was cheap to produce and sold at a high price, and tobacco became Virginia's main ca cash crop. So, at first, the governors of Virginia discouraged us settlers from growing tobacco because they wanted us to grow food. But the colonists who wanted these riches, they, they were not phased, for they traded tobacco for food brought by ships from other colonies. Looking back, it's apparent that my tobacco crop that I named Ornico Tobacco had saved the Jamestown colony and then in turn fueled its growth. In the early days of settling in Jamestown, we were surrounded by disease, sickness, and famine. A large factor in this was the fact that Jamestown was located on a slow-moving river and bacteria and germs thrived in the water. The swampy land bred mosquitoes, which carried malaria. The men also threw trash and sewage into the river and polluted an already unhealthy water source. Now, the reason I bring up this point was to allude to the fact that after I introduced my tobacco crop, colonists needed land to grow their own tobacco. And they began moving inland up the James River and away from the swampy waters and more near the coast. This water was cleaner and there were fewer mosquitoes and less disease. Colonists started to live longer because of this. Not only did this crop lead to more sustainability among settlements, it also made it easier to recruit new settlers. And then immigration allowed for the colony to grow even more. So, by facing the problem of the Spanish monopoly of trade, more specifically tobacco, my plant had opened the doors to the tobacco industry as many were inspired by my product and then they began to start planting themselves along the James River. I have proven that American soil is workable and that it is possible to create a sustainable colony in this foreign land. Referring back to my statement of creating a comparable tobacco leaf to that one in the West Indies, I had proved any single person that had any doubts. In 1617, 20,000 pounds of Virginia tobacco were shipped over back to England. And just that year following that, the amount doubled. I had gained market share from the Spanish and created a stable economy for the new settlements to maintain living conditions. I am proud of myself and everyone
that has taken this journey with me. I realized the risks of traveling to this new world, and I also realized that the odds were most likely stacked against me.